Hello there. So I want to start off first with a little bit of a story, so please bear with me. So a while ago, after watching some YouTube videos, I became aware of this Quansheng radio. And I was fascinated by all the, the firmwares and things that were flying around. And I found the firmware source code, the Exuma source code online. So I thought, I'm going to get one of these and I'm going to have a play with it. And that's what happened. I ordered one and then I started basically experimenting with the firmware and see what I could get the radio to do. But this led to a few frustrations. And that was that, you know, I'm getting on a bit now. I'm in my mid 50s. My eyesight isn't as good as it used to be. My hands shake a little bit more than they used to. So every time I would do something with the firmware and I'd then need to test it and, and see if it worked, you know, I'm squinting at that little tiny screen and I'm jabbing at all the buttons with my big old sausage fingers. It was getting a little bit tedious. And that was the reason why I initially made a remote control. Right. It made it so much easier for me that I had a big display so I could see what was on the radio. I had nice big buttons that I could press. It just made my life so much more simple. And it kind of real, it kind of dawned on me that, you know, if I'm finding this useful, perhaps other people will too. And that was, that was how Quan Doc was born, basically from that. Now, come to today and I'm trying to get packet radio to work with it and I sort of decided on using something like direwolf rather than programming it myself because it's a huge thing I mean you look at direwolf there's tons of things it can do it would just be reinventing the, the wheel basically trying to program QD to do that but there were challenges involved with getting direwolf to work now if you want to use the Quan Sheng radio with Dire Wolf and you've got something like an AIOC cable or I think the other one is Digirig or there are other solutions out there but I don't have any sort of experience with those so I can't really comment on them. You can just use Dire Wolf with the radio standalone. You know, just start up Dire Wolf, start up your APRS software and away you go. But of course, when you're doing that, the radio is standalone. You can't remote control it anymore. You know, that's the whole point of of this software is to remotely control the radio so if you want to do that and you want to use APRS I had to somehow find a way to get Direwolf to work with the dock and there are three main problems that arise with that the way Direwolf and, and I would imagine other other setups work to key up the radio to to press the push to talk is they use um, a hardware signal on the serial port, either the carrier detect, uh, the data terminal ready and carry detect, or the clear to send, ready to send lines. Right? It, they, it can use either one of those. Now the problem here is it uses the serial port that the uh, the AIOC has built into it, and the issue there is that the dock's using that. Right? It needs to use that to communicate with the radio. So Direwolf can't send that information into the radio because it can't open that serial port because it's in use. And the other problem, this is the pinout for the interface on the side of the radio. And you can see here that the push to talk line is actually shared with the serial RX data line. And you can see there that's the push to talk switch, although that's the wrong symbol because that's a latching switch symbol. It should be a momentary switch symbol, but whatever. When this push to talk is engaged, it will ground out the serial RX data. And that's a big, big issue because, you know, it's a remote control software. It's relying on data being sent to and from the radio in order to operate. And if you cut off the received data, that's going to cause a problem. And your third issue, like if you have your system set up the way I demonstrated in the last video, where you have an audio pass through in the Windows settings so that you can send voice into the radio and you can listen to it. That's an issue because Direwolf sends audio to the radio in the same way. So if you have that, re that microphone enabled, you're going to get problems because the, 
the audio from your microphone is going to be mixed in with the audio from Direwolf, right? And that could corrupt the, the data. Now that third problem is manageable because you could either, if you go into your control panel, you'll probably make a shortcut from maybe your sound settings on the desktop. If you go in there then, whenever you want to use data mode, you could just go into your microphone, go into your listen settings and just disable it. And then you, your mic isn't going to interfere with Direwolf. Or an easier solution would be to use a microphone that has a mute button on it. Right. A lot of microphones have now, it's either like a button that's sort of molded onto the cable or it's on the microphone itself. You press it and it mutes the mic. So I had to find a way basically to get QD to be able to go into transmit mode from an external signal. Right. So Direwolf somehow has to tell Quansheng Doc to, to go into transmit mode. So you need to install some software, basically. And this software is called Com0Com. And it's a virtual serial port system. The link to Com0Com will be in the description. I'm not going to go through installing it. I mean, let's face it, you all know how to install software. So if I go into the configuration for Com0Com, because I have it installed here, and I'll show you how I have mine set up. Whatever you've got in here after installation, just clear it out. I'm going to click Add Pair. OK. And then it will appear. Select this and then just change the names. It gives them names like C and CA0. That's no good because most software won't be able to recognize that port. It has to start with COM and end in a number. So we'll call this COM998 and COM999. And then click apply. And that one's done. Then add pair again. And this one we're going to call COM 887 and com 888 click apply and that's all you have to do with com zero com once that's set up it's just done leave it now if we start the doc software here so let me start this up you will notice in settings there is this dcd ptt port now this is just a setting so that you can call that com port anything you like I've just used 999 and 998 as defaults. You can just leave it at that. It, it should work. And the numbers are high enough that it shouldn't conflict with anything else on your system. That's basically why I chose that. Let's go into Diable configuration now. So I'll show you the configure. I'm not really going to go into the full configuration of Diable because that's a huge thing. And there are YouTubers that have done this far better than I could. They have more experience with it. But I'll go through the settings that you absolutely need. And I'll leave everything else up to you. So let's open the configuration file here. If we start Direwolf, you can see it gives you a list of the audio devices which are available on your system. Now, in my case, I'm going to want AIOC audio. So these two here. So it's the first one is one and the second one is two. So those are the ones that I need to set in the configuration. So you do that with a device and it's there, you see. So one and two. I've already got it there, but... That's what you need to set. So if we come down a bit further, you can see some settings that I've put here. Now, this just seems better for me. This is the uh, delay and tail. This is how long it waits before it actually starts sending data. That's TX delay. And how long it leaves the, the radio keyed up after it's finished sending data. I just find TX delay 50 and TX tail 10 to, be, to work quite well. And here we have PTT. COM999 DTR, okay? And this will allow Direwolf to communicate with the dock and key it up. So the, these are the parameters you want there. You might want to experiment with the delay and tail, but that one, that one is required. So go a bit further down and you'll find null modem. So this, is, this will be commented out on yours. So just uncomment it and then put COM887 like that. OK, and that's all you need for the Direwolf configuration. Save that and close out. So if I start Direwolf here now, AIOC, AIOC. OK, so that seems OK. And I'm going to put the rate. Uh, this will work in both modes, both in this mode and XVFO. I'm going to put it in XVFO because uh, I can turn the power all the way down. 
you're going to need some kind of APRS uh, client. I'm just using this one, but there's a whole host of them out there. It's up to you which one you use. And I have this configured to use Direwolf as a TNC, which I'll just briefly go over. Okay, I'm just going to get the dock to always be on top. I'm not too familiar with this software, so bear with me. Uh, configure, and you can see their ports. I have port serial TNC on COM888. That's basically how you would set up um, your APRS software to use a serial TNC on port COM888. So that should be it. So if I, let me turn my other radio on here. Okay, so hopefully OBS won't noise gate this, but uh, I'm going to send out now a, in fact, I'm going to take the squelch off this. Okay, so. So hopefully you could hear that and see that it was indeed activating Quansheng Dock and making it transmit. So that's basically it. That's the way you set up Direwolf with QD. So thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, put them below because I know this is kind of a complex thing. So I'll try my best to help you out if you're having any issues. All right. Thank you for watching. Bye.